Hello and welcome to this video about automatically being able to change between different rates on an OpenTX powered radio. Now apologies if you can hear the wind in the background, it is howling a gale today here in the UK so I can't go out and do anything but this is a great chance for me to kind of record this video. Now this video uh, has come about in a slightly different way. Normally it's a Patreon of mine kind of getting in touch and asking a question about OTX or one of you viewers or subscribers asking a great question that prompts me to make a video. This time it was my flying buddy Ross. We were actually flying, uh, having a really nice flying day and over a cup of coffee we were just uh, kind of catching up while maintaining our social distance of course because I was recording this I'm still in lockdown here in the UK and he had a great question which is you know the dual rates, How, could you get those to change automatically on your radio? And I thought, you know what, that's a really great question. Now, dual rates, I'm not going to go too much into what they all are, I'll put a link down below if you're interested in what dual rates are. But rates are um, kind of how much movement there is in the controls on your wing, or your plane, or whatever it is. And so you've got the elevator, you've got your ailerons, and you've got your rudder. Now, high rates means that those control surfaces physically move a lot, which gives you very, very uh, aggressive reactions when you're flying, and that can be great when you're doing acrobatics. Low rates tend to be when you have much smaller movements, and that can be good for more gentle flying. And many pilots I know have multiple rates on their radio that they can flick between. So they can either fly it like they stole it on high rates and have very uh, aggressive movements for aerobatics, or if they are just poodling around having a nice relaxing time, they can go in lower rates and it's easier to fly and uh, less aggressive in its reaction to control stick inputs. Now, normally the way that's done, let me just kind of show you how I would probably set it up. Let's move everything. Let's kind of simulate this. Hopefully you can see that around my head is that um, we would normally uh, have it. So say, for example, we have the elevator. This is a Mo2 radio we're looking at here. So there's the low rate. So it goes from minus 60 to plus 60 um, on both sides, both the elevator and aileron. And I can flick it into high rates. And now it goes from 80 to 80. So that's the very basic way you do it. And to do that is really, really simple in OTX. All I've done is I've got the elevator output in the mixer set for a particular weight. That's the amount of movement that I want. And I've just assigned it to a switch. And I've said that if SA is in the top position, give me this uh, weight or this amount of movement, which is 80% of the movement. If the switch SA is not in that position, that's what the little exclamation mark is for, then give me 60% movement. And that's how you would typically set it up, many people do. Now, there's loads of cooler ways that you can potentially do this. So Ross, brace yourself, we're gonna go through this, buddy. I'm, I'm sure if he wants to do it, I'll end up having to do it on his radio. So there's a slightly nicer way to do it. So rather than just being a switch, you can actually set it up on flight modes, and I use flight modes an awful lot. So what I've done is I have set up in the mixes, uh, rather than where the switch was is now blank, but you can see here you've got all these different flight modes. I've only turned them on in different flight modes. So you see the 80% movement or the high rates now says high rates, and the low rates now says low rates. How's it all doing that? Well, that's flight modes. So if we look at flight modes, the default flight mode that it's always in is called low rates. Unless the switch is not in the back position, then it goes into this flight mode called high rates, and then we select those in here. And what that means is it works exactly the same way. So if we just move the control into the top right-hand corner, we see I have 60% maximum throw, and as soon as I move it out of that, we have 80% throw. And this is probably more of the way that I would set it up. I tend to have these uh, switches in their default position as the radio powers on in the lower position, and then I can opt to fly in a more aggressive way. So you can see they go 60. But the other big cool thing, check on the screen. It actually tells me which rate I am in. And I could also have the radio announcing whether I'm in low, mid, or high rates. Uh, via an audio prompt as well, just to keep track of it. 
So for me, that's the way I tend to set it up uh, before we do anything clever. So let's try and get into the clever stuff. So the reason for this question was that uh, Ross has a couple of EDF fast uh, kind of jet style foamies. And when he is flying really quickly, he wants uh, lower rates so uh, that it isn't as aggressive when it's really motoring. But when he's on approach and he is uh, flying a lot slower, he wants higher rates to give him more control authority. Now he would normally select those using one of those two ways of doing it, either on a switch or via something like a flight mode. But he was saying, can I do it automatically? And yes, you can. So if we simulate this, um, as I move the stick up, or the throttle, we go from when the throttle is relatively low, we have high rates. And when the throttle goes over 50%, then it flicks into low rates. Now, this isn't ideal. In fact, if I was doing this for real, I'd probably want something like uh, an airspeed sensor and have, rather than have an arbitrary break point in the throttle, actually use a telemetry coming back from the airspeed sensor to decide whether or not it should be high or low rates. But just for the purposes of uh, this to show what, how cool OpenTX can be sometimes. So there we go. So I'm, um, so I want to throw it into the air, uh, give it the full beans, give it a throw, and away it goes very quickly, it gets up to speed, flying and hooting around. And as I come in, I drop the throttle, I'm on approach, I now have high rates, I can control the approach and flare nicely and drop it into the grass. Happy days. Now the way that's been done, if I go into the mixes, it actually looks very, very similar to last time. In fact, it looks identical to last time, really. What we're using, we're using flight modes to change between the two different weights. But flight modes, rather than it being changed by a switch, a physical switch on the radio is being changed by a logical switch. You can see that L01. Let me show you how the logical switch is working. So what the logical switch is doing is all it's doing is it is, I've said, if the throttle value is A is less than zero, and zero is the middle position. I know this is really confusing in MTX, but the way it goes is from minus 100 to plus 100, with zero being the middle throttle position. If A is less than X, then turn on and that is the logical switch you can see you can actually see logical switch here uh, logical switch one being turned on and as I go up as logical switch one goes off it goes back to the default of the low rates you see that how that's working now we could be clever and we could do stuff like in flight modes we can fade it in and fade it out because in practice as you reduce the throttle, uh, the aircraft isn't going to slow immediately. It's going, there's going to be a finite amount of time before it transitions into um, a slower speed. Similarly, when you blip the throttle, there's going to be a short delay before it starts to really motor along and get a lot faster. So you could use the fade in and out in here to change the way that happens so it wasn't immediate. Um, or you could potentially put um, a, a delay or something on the logical switch to help that. Now, of course, I know everyone's going to watch this and say, that's great, but what about if I've got three rates? And that's very common. There's a high, medium, and low rates uh, for some advanced aircraft. So let me show you how I've done that. So again, very similar setup. Uh, again, using the throttle, um, not ideal. Um, again, I would probably look at maybe playing with airspeed sensors and using the telemetry and the speed related telemetry for that little logical switch. But let's just for the purpose of this, just use the throttle. So in the lower third of the throttle, we're in low rates, then we go to medium rates, and then we go to high rates. And you can set this up however you want it. But let me show you how I've set up the logical switches. Because again, surprise, surprise, the flight modes are being selected by a couple of logical switches. So how am I getting three positions? How am I detecting that? And it looks like this. I'm not going to go too much into the logic behind this, but what we're basically doing in line one is we're saying when A is greater than X, so when the throttle is over 40, 
So again, the middle channel position is uh, zero. So when it's kind, it, it's it's above that position, which will give us that middle area. Logical switch one turns on, and then if and logical switch two is detecting when it goes above that. Again, oh, I'm not going to get too much into this. If you want to get into the weeds and logical switches, go and check out the other videos in the OpenTX Mix School. I'll put a link to the description. But what that means is, if you watch the logical switches up here, as I move it up, because the middle position, we get logical switch two on. And then the top position, we get logical switch one. And then we have no logical switches. So you could set this up to be however you want it. So that could be high rates, could be a default, and what we're doing is we're just flicking between the three. So hopefully that's interesting for you about how potentially we could set that up. That was one of those really fun questions at the flying field where over a cup of coffee somebody says, oh, I wonder if I, you could set OpenTX up to automatically uh, change how sensitive the controls are based on the throttle. And the answer, of course, is Yes, you can. It's over TX. It'll do pretty much anything. And hopefully for those of you that are um, fixed-wing pilots and you play with this stuff, that's kind of interesting to give you a couple of ideas of things to try with your model. Again, a couple of links below for OpenTX if you're interested in finding out more about this stuff. If you're a fixed-wing pilot and you're using an OpenTX powered radio, there is so much really cool stuff in here that you can use to make flying the model an awful lot more fun. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.